And today I'll be presenting on healthy meal planning. So the topics that I'll be covering are how to create a balanced plate. And I'll be giving you the tools you need to, uh, to find healthy recipes and meal ideas and some resources to, again, help you do that. So this class is part of a six-week series, and this is the last one. You can see it's underlined here. Uh, to attend the other topics, you can find other classes on Basie Medical Group's YouTube channel or call our office to see our class options. So let's start with the balanced plate. Uh, this this uh, method of balancing the plate replaces the food pyramid that we used to have in the past. And so what you do is you take a, a nine inch plate for adults and you cut it in half. Half of it is filled with colorful, uh, colorful variety of vegetables. And these are all low carb vegetables. And then you know, a quarter is gonna be your grains, whole grains or various starches. And then a quarter is gonna be your protein. So we are aiming for lean, low fat proteins um, and, and the, the starches and grains should be rich in fiber. Uh, so, so what exactly do these parts of the plate look like? Let's take a deep dive. So for the vegetable part of the plate, there is a, a pretty wide variety of things to choose from. So hopefully there are some that you enjoy. Um, and, uh, you know, they include everything from, you know, carrots, mushrooms, uh, onions, and tomatoes to, to foods that you may not have as often, like asparagus, artichoke, uh, you know, and, uh, and okra. So definitely try some new ones to, to make this part of the plate a little more interesting. Our body loves variety. And then for that grain quarter of the plate or, or starch quarter of the plate, uh, this contains uh, you know, starchy vegetables, which include, which actually include our legumes, our beans. Uh, and you can see examples here like black beans, uh, also pinto beans, edamame, which are young soybeans, uh, you know, chickpeas and various others. It includes corn, it includes uh, peas, so sweet peas, potatoes and sweet potatoes. You can see both here. Uh, in terms of how quickly these turn into sugar, your small red skinned or colorful uh, new potatoes are going to be better than the, the large baked potatoes or the russet. Uh, yucca is also a starchy vegetable as well as the yam. There's a one type of squash that's also considered starchy and that's butternut, uh, you know, winter or acorn squash. Those are, uh, those are going to be squash, uh, those are going to be starchy. The rest of the squashes are not. And you know, these can all be eaten as whole foods, meaning just, you know, eat it in its minimally processed form, or it can be processed into breads, pastas, patties, tortillas, etc. So that would all fit under that quarter of the plate. And then for, for the whole grains, this is what we mean. We're talking about oats, uh, whole wheat, or farro, which is another form of whole wheat brown or wild rice, quinoa, barley, rye and buckwheat. Uh, so you'll see these grains all look whole, you know, rather than, uh, rather than being, uh, you know, white uh, or refined would be another name for the highly processed form of these grains. But the whole versions of these grains, so, uh, you know, we've talked in previous classes about how we can you know, make sure that they're whole grain, what we can look for on the nutrition label. And just as a reminder that to look at the fiber content, you know, the, the more whole grain it is, the more fiber it will contain. Um, it will also have whole grain written right in the ingredient list. It should say whole, you know, whatever that grain is, whole wheat. And, you know, so these can be eaten as whole grains where you can see each individual kernel or also made into bread, cereals, pastas, noodles, couscous, 
pancakes, tortillas, etc. These are all just different shapes that we can make out of flours from whole grains. So again, these would all fit under that quarter of the plate. You know, I suggest choosing the whole versions of these more often than the more, uh, you know, than the flour-based versions of these. Uh, but these are all considered fine. And then for the final part of the plate, we've got our protein. We have both plant and animal protein options that would be good choices here. So we definitely encourage plant proteins to help control cholesterol uh, and to, you know, to support heart health. So plant proteins include our beans, lentils, you know, and other legumes that are protein rich, uh, including soy. And uh, soy products include tofu, edamame, as well as soy milk. And these are considered the less processed forms of soy. You know, the more processed versions would be textured soy, pro textured vegetable protein, or TVP, as well as soy isolates. Those are, are not uh, recommended or recommended in very limited amounts. You know, we, we encourage choosing minimally processed forms of soy like this. Uh, seeds and nuts as well provide plant sources of protein. And then animal protein, you know, is, is fairly common in the U.S. You know, these, where most people are familiar with eggs. Uh, you know, in terms of the dairy category, we have cheeses, uh, milk and yogurt providing some protein, uh, seafood, poultry. And, uh, and red meat. So red meat, we want to limit. Uh, red meat has been associated with certain types of cancer, and, um, and it often contains saturated fat, which can raise cholesterol levels. So red meat is anything that walks on all fours, our pork, our beef, our lamb. Uh, and again, we want to choose this less often. So, you know, this isn't part of that you know, three portion balanced plate, uh, but it is very, very important. So our healthy fats support our heart. They also support our immune system. And the best kind for, for those are olives, avocados, uh, various types of nuts, seeds, you know, butters, you know, a really just blended nuts, uh, a nut butter like almond butter or peanut butter would be considered part of that. Uh, fatty fish, like salmon, tuna, or sardines, as well as oils made from many of these healthy fats, like avocado oil, you know, and olive oil. These are great choices uh, to provide healthy fats for our meal. And this helps provide fats that our body needs, right? As well as uh, to helping feel more satisfied from our meal. So get those healthy fats in. And then here we can see some spices and herbs. So definitely spice up your meals. These are very, very healthy. They also support our immune system uh, and, um, and add a lot of flavor, you know, without going heavily on the salt. So herbs uh, include, you know, dill, parsley, cilantro, rosemary, all of these have wonderful effects on the body and spices, it include things like garlic, chili, cinnamon, and, and even vanilla and chocolate. <laughs> so, so enjoy these. And, uh, and make them part of your meal. Fruit is uh, very versatile. It can be used as part of meals. It can be used as a healthy alternative to uh, uh, maybe a, a sugary dessert. It can be part of um, of snacks as well. So, so just some ways that we can use fruits. We can add it to smoothies, one or two servings at most. Um, it can be added to salads. You can see here this salad contains some leafy greens, raspberries, avocado, healthy fat, uh, and uh, you know, and cottage cheese. So the raspberries serve as the healthy carb there, uh, as the healthy starch. And we've got our protein from the cottage cheese. You know, we've got our vegetables and the, and the healthy fats. So you can see it as part of that balanced meal and that salad. And then here's another example where maybe uh, dining out, you can order a, a, veggie, a veggie omelet and then get a, a side of fruit rather than, um, 
maybe getting uh, you know, pancakes or something else that, that might contribute to weight gain. So you know, what's a serving of fruit look like? How much is okay? And here we've listed you know, what a good serving would look like, what, what a good portion would look like. We've got a small apple, a small orange. Um, some of them are not as obvious, so a cup of, of mixed berries, papaya or, or cantaloupe. Uh, you know, similar with the watermelon fruits like uh, like cherries or uh, you know or, or grapes are a little bit harder because they're small um, and it's not always clear how much uh, a you know a recommended serving would be. But you can use this list to help guide you. I'll also note that you know dried fruit is here as well. We have two tablespoons of raisins here at the bottom of this list, and the important thing to remember is that dried fruit should always eaten should be eaten in smaller amounts because it's you know it's fruit that's been dehydrated so so a tablespoon of of raisins can have as much sugar as you know a, a larger it's the same thing as eating uh, a larger amount of uh of grapes whole grapes you know maybe a handful of grapes um, but both of those will have the same amount of sugar so so that's why the quantity of of the uh, the dry fruit should be much smaller, uh, and and hopefully, you know, the grape, uh, the the raisins that that you get will be will not be covered in in sugar, as as oftentimes they are. So just make sure you get them unsweetened. So let's dig into our meals. Here we have some breakfast ideas. So uh, one source of of uh, recipes. You can see here is eatingwell.com, and there are you know dietitians, nutrition experts on their uh, on their board running their website. So, uh, so they, you know, the, their recipes are, uh, you know, are um, you know checked by nutrition experts to make sure that they're they're going to be balanced meals, uh, providing nutrition. So these are just some examples here. Uh, we've got avocado toast. We have uh, some banana pancakes, uh, smoothies. You know everything ranging from the the sweet to the savory. So hopefully you can find ideas on on their website. Uh, another great source of recipes is the My Fitness Pal blog, and you can see a few of their ideas here. We've got cottage cheese with fruit and nuts, uh, which would be a really nice, easy, quick breakfast. Uh, a tofu or an egg scramble would work here with some avocado and, and spinach. And then we've got some oatmeal with, with walnuts and blueberries for a very uh, you know, fiber-rich, plant-based uh, breakfast that, that's really good at cutting down on cholesterol. So, and you can see on MyFitnessPal, they have you know, great visuals and they, they have the, you know, the nutrition facts right at the bottom there. You can see these are all high in in protein you know five grams of of fiber uh, or more for each of these they're also rich in protein you know everything ranging from 10 and a half to 20 grams for these so these are things that i'm looking at to make sure that they're going to be filling uh and, and balanced meals so moving on to lunch and dinner ideas eating well has some here for you as well you can see there uh you know, they range from everything as simple as just a, you know, turkey tomato sandwich uh, to things that might take more, more time and energy to create might be better for a Sunday night, you know, cooking session like lentil soup. Uh, so, so again, they're all colorful. They're all balanced. And they're all very creative. So from my fitness pal blog, we have more ideas. Uh, we've got soup and toast you know, some lentil miso kale soup with avocado toast. We have tacos, you know, chicken salad, noodle bowls. We've got, um, you know, a, a salmon dish. And, and you know, we've even got some Moroccan flavors here with a chili and, and salad to go with it. So we've got, uh, you know, room for lots of different, you know, cultural preferences, taste preferences, uh, Again, the goal is always just that balance. There's so many different combinations you can create uh, just using those tips. And, and snacking, 
can absolutely be part of a healthy meal plan. Uh, I would recommend probably up to two to three snacks a day as needed. You do not need snacks to to help run your metabolism. You know, uh, this is not necessary whatsoever. They are good for helping us minimize hunger. If there's a long break, let's say between lunch and dinner, and you feel like, you know, if you don't have, you know, anything before your dinner meal, you might overeat at dinner. So that's something that we're trying to avoid. We're just trying to, you know, have something, you know, kind of strategically timed to help you manage hunger levels and be able to, you know, have healthy portions at mealtime. So uh, a snack that will help, you know, control blood sugar, that will help keep you satisfied uh, are, you know, snacks that are going to include some kind of protein or at least, you know, fiber in there. So examples would include, you know, nut butter, again, like peanut or almond butter with celery or a small apple. It could be you know, nuts and dried fruit, basically a trail mix. Uh, you could do, you know, string cheese and, and baby carrots, you know, hummus and whole grain crackers, uh, cottage cheese or Greek yogurt, so incorporating some of that protein dairy with maybe uh, a little bit of fruit, you know, hard boiled eggs and cucumber. You can also make, you know, completely plant based snacks like, like this whole grain uh, toast with hummus, avocado, sun dried tomato, and uh, you know, and hemp seeds. So this is a, a nice, you know, hearty snack that can even uh, work as a breakfast. And you want to make snacking a smart habit by snacking only when you're hungry, by keeping snacks small, so about 200 calories or, or under, uh, by, by planning them and portioning them ahead of time rather, rather than grazing throughout the day. Um, and of course, if you're if you're choosing snacks that include, uh, you know, dairy or deli meats, we want to make sure that those are refrigerated. That you're practicing food safety recommendations, um, and ultimately, you know, that snacks are are nutrient rich. That they're the same things that you're putting on your plate at meal times. Um, so rather than filling up on filler foods like like crackers. Um, you know, and uh, and chips, go for, you know, even if you're craving something crunchy, go for a crunchy snack that is going to give you nutrition. Um, so just a few snack ideas from my fitness pal. We've got a peanut butter and jelly chia seed pudding. So, uh, you know, those seeds pack a, a good nutrition punch. Um, and this can be made ahead of time. So you can just take it with you when you're, you know, on the run on the way to maybe work or a, you know, an office visit, a doctor's office visit, uh, you know, something as simple as an apple and a little bit of cheese would make for a really great simple snack. And how do we, you know, put all this together? We have here, you know, a breakfast with, you know, eggs as, as the protein, some toast and avocado, uh, you know, throwing together a snack of some walnuts and apples for lunch. Maybe we'll have a grilled chicken, uh, you know, and black bean salad with a vinaigrette, you know, maybe some olive oil and, and vinegar. And then for dinner, maybe a, a small piece of salmon with, uh, with the brown rice and, and uh, some, uh, some vegetables. So you'll notice there are times, you know, that, that we've listed here, you know, for, for breakfast, snack, lunch, and dinner. And those are, are just, you know, examples of times. But, but what I want to point out here is that timing matters. You know, you do not need to, you know, eat breakfast as soon as you wake up. Uh, but breakfast should be you know, sometime in the morning rather than maybe having your first meal in the afternoon, you know, um, breakfast means breaking your fast, you know, we're fasting at night and breakfast is the first time that we break that. So technically it's just your first meal of the day. And 
generally speaking, I would try to keep it before noon. So even, you know, a breakfast at 10 a.m. would be completely fine. Um, this does not affect your metabolism, but having it earlier in the day can help control uh, hunger at night. You know, I do see this in many cases where sometimes people don't eat until the afternoon and, you know, but they're still hungry and eating around 9 or 10 p.m. So we want to keep most of our food during daytime hours. And this is just, you know, one example of that where, you know, breakfast starts at 8 a.m. You're snacking and eating meals regularly, you know, until dinner at maybe 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, one study shows that eating past 8 p.m. is associated with weight gain. So again, just encouraging everyone to eat earlier in the day and not leave huge amounts of time in between meals. You'll notice that here, the longest period in between meals is only five hours. And um, so that's the most you know, um, amount of time I would leave in between meals. So calories, you know, this is a question that dietitians get a lot. How many calories do I need? And I, I try to shift focus away from calories just because they don't really reflect health. And many parts of weight loss do not, do not depend on calories. They depend on, uh, you know, controlling insulin, you know, and hormone levels uh, to help uh, limit the amount of weight gain that's caused by, by poor blood sugar control. But generally speaking, um, if you're just looking for an estimate of how much you might need for women losing weight, it ra can range anywhere from 1,200 to even 1,800, just depending on your activity level, your nutrition needs, you know, and, um, you know, the way your body, your individual body is. And for men losing weight, it ranges from 1,500 to even, I would say, 2,000 calories again, depending on your individual needs. And I would avoid going too low in calories. You know, a good weight loss plan is, should not be a starvation diet, um, should not, you know, make you feel hungry all day long, basically. It should, should leave you feeling satisfied. When you go too low in calories, our body actually tends to slow down our metabolism. You know, so, uh, so you know, make better choices. Focus on that. Focus on avoiding calories eaten very late at night. You know, focus on, uh, you know, eating food mindfully and slowly and, uh, you know, and working on that, that meal planning. So uh, if you would like to have some sort of technology to help you manage your, your eating habits, uh, you know, the USDA Body Weight Planner uh, can give uh, you know estimates of of calories as well as um, as well as you know tracking food intake. My Fitness Pal you know allows you to put in your uh, your foods that you're eating daily and and their portions, and it will do all those calculations for you. It will tell you how many calories you need and how you're comparing, and not just calories. It will actually tell you uh, you know how many grams of fiber you need, how much protein you need, how much uh, you know, of those details, and again, how your diet compares. Lose It um, is, is similar to MyFitnessPal. It's also a really, really commonly used app to help, uh, you know, track eating habits. And then Noom, um, the reason I like Noom um, is because it focuses on habit change, not just, you know, calories. It focuses on changing our behavior. And, you know, this is a paid app, but I, I will mention it. Uh, because it is, you know, it is evidence-based that has been shown to help people change those habits. And, you know, I promised resources, so I will show you each of these resources and what their website looks like. The, uh, the first thing that I'll show you are free meal plans, right? This is fantastic. So there's three that I'll mention. The first one is from Eating Well. So here's the Eating Well website. And when you're looking at uh, these tabs across, uh, across the page towards the top, you basically click on meal plans. And they list various meal plans here, everything ranging from you know, high fiber, heart healthy, weight loss, you know, low carb, 
uh, et cetera. And you know, I'll just click on you know, weight loss meal plans and, and just show you what it looks like. They have various cal calorie levels. And even if it says 1,200 calories, often what happens is you know, at the bottom of each day, it will say, add this to get you know, more calories. Um, so you can see here, it says, if a 1,200 calorie diet is too low for you, see our other weight loss meal plans at 1,500, 1,600, 1,800, and 12,000 calories. And so they, they also give you tips on prepping a week of meals. And this is what you know, a sample plan would, would look like. It just lists uh, what to eat you know, for each meal. And then you know, if it's, a, if it's a, something like white bean and avocado toast, you can actually link, it's actually linked to the recipe uh, so, that, so that in case you're not sure how to make it, it would have that for you. So that's eating well. You know, check out their meal plans. The next one is MyFitnessPal, which I've already mentioned uh, you know, in their meal ideas. MyFitnessPal has a blog. You might be familiar with um, some of their, their other products, but they, they have uh, you know, just kind of a, a free blog that uh, includes easily Googleable <laughs> uh, meal plans. And they're called, you know, what 1,200 calories uh, looks like in a day. And what I like is how visual they are. So, you know, you can see here they, they have a whole day's worth of meals. And then, you know, that's 1,200 calories, and they have higher levels as well, what 2,000 calories looks like. You know, so here we go. We've got we've got all the breakfast, breakfast, morning snack, lunch, afternoon snack, dinner, and dessert. And I love how how colorful they are, and you know how how simple they can be to make. Uh, so for the next one here, let me show you the Skinny Taste page. So if you go on SkinnyTaste.com, also you know, similar to eating well, they have a tab called meal plans. So when you click on meal plans, uh, you actually get a whole range of, <laughs> of plans that you can see. So seven day healthy meal plan, you know, August 31st to September 6th. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to click on that here and, and you can see they've got, uh, you know, they've got the details once you scroll down. So for example, Monday, you know, they'll tell you exactly what to eat. And similar to eating well, you can click on the links to get the recipes. And they, they even have Weight Watchers points if you're you know, following Weight Watchers and you'd like to follow along uh, you know, and see how that fits into your Weight Watchers plan. So, so that's skinny taste. And for, for our next one, uh, what I'm actually going to show you is a program that is uh, that that is a paid meal planning program, um, but a, a great choice if you're uh, if you're able to make that investment. You know, they have a six month plan and a and a year long plan. And what you do is, um, you know, they they do have a free trial, so you can always try it out first. And what they do is, they collect a lot of information about your preferences. So you can see I'm scrolling through a lot of the questions here. You can see exactly what they are. So are there any ingredients you prefer to avoid? You know, uh, do, you, do you include bread and pasta in your meals? You know, what best describes you? You know, do you like variety or, um, you know, or is it more about, you know, budget? Uh, so once you go through all of these questions and you, uh, you, know, you complete it, then you would just click see my meals and they would populate with meal ideas for you. Um, and they even have, uh, you know, shopping, your grocery shopping list, you know, that they'll create for you and, and it'll uh, hopefully make your, uh, it, it, it's really able to make your meal planning, you know, much easier and take a lot of the thinking out of that. So they actually have a diabetes prevention plan that's covered by some insurance plans. And to do that, you would go to um, soleraformecom 
and, and they've partnered with PlateJoy and you can take the quiz to see if you would, uh, you would qualify for, for these programs. And finally, uh, I'll mention Slender Kitchen, which also has uh, a paid meal planning service uh, I believe they also have a free seven-day meal plan that you can use, uh, and and you can also click on meal plans here at the top, similar to those other websites, you know, and they'll describe their their program here. Uh, so so hopefully, you know, some of those free or paid meal planning uh, resources will be useful to you, and I. You know, I hope that you'll you'll take advantage of some of these you know these wonderful uh, meal plans that are out there already ready for you to use. Okay, so we just covered this um, this slide here, and uh, you know, and that wraps up our our meal planning class. To take advantage of other free classes, you know, for example, we have our sleep class, we have diabetes and heart disease prevention, we have a class on managing diabetes. Uh, you know, we have some wonderful classes to help you um, to help you, you know, take charge of your health. You can call our office to find out more details. You can also go on facey.com. And, and again, we have our YouTube channel uh, from Facey Medical Group where you can view our pre-recorded sessions. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day.